Act. Uh, the promise by Director of Public Prosecutions that he would bring on board lawyers from the private sector to help with some of the high-profile cases has come to pass. Yes, the DPP, Nuruddin Haji, has appointed a Queen's Counsel, Hawar Qureshi, to lead the prosecution of cases involving state and public officers. Haji, in a statement, says the appointment of the London-based lawyer is informed by the need to avoid the conflict between the ODPP and the judiciary. That reason, among others, is a clear pointer that the case against Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu is among the cases that Qureshi will be mandated to prosecute. His appointment has elicited an array of reactions from the legal fraternity, especially after the DPP said in a statement that he could not get any private legal counsel for the job due to the unique nature of requirements and the complexity of the cases. Well, in studio tonight, for more on this is Professor George Wajakoya. And let's begin with uh, what's raising eyebrows, the fact that the DPP advertised this position but says he was unable to find a suitable source for this in the country. Do you smell any mystery in this? I think the DPP was right under the circumstances, given the fact that in Kenya today, everything is suspect, everything is uh, blue banded with the politics, everything is tribalized, every appointment in this country, one has to blow the whistles of another political hegemony. So it's high time that we came out of this matrix because of what we have seen in the past with the collapsing kind of industry, the industries that we have, appointments or mediocre appointments that have been ongoing I think it is high time that we needed somebody to put a stamp on it. Those people are now coming up and yawning and saying that, oh, uh, this is uh, the importation of foreign justice in the country. They are forgetting to understand that the world has become global and their freedom of movement, of, uh, freedom of movement and goods and peoples and what have you. And every country needs another, be it in, in terms of economic matrix, in terms of social justice in terms of uh, legal justice, we need each other. That's why we had Ruto and uh, uh, Kenyatta being taken to the head. They could have as well been tried here. And given the fact that that mediocre, mediocrity that went on in parliament where people came in to say that Kenyan legal system was not well enough, that would have been, that, that's one of the areas that made us look like people have lost uh, our destiny in terms of justice. So I don't see anything wrong with the, uh, the DPP coming out and saying, you know what, corruption has got to end. First of all, even at the DPP's office, how many times have files gotten lost during the previous DP DPP's tenors in his own office by state council, as corrupt as they were? So let us have and let us give him the tools that he requires. Let us also have other jurisdictions look at the way we do our things in this country. Uh, but like I mentioned, there has been a lot of issues in the office of the uh, DPP alone, and that is what is raising questions because this was a single sourcing process, and many are asking whether due process was followed in this appointment. Well, what else do we need with the issue of due process when Article 157, or is it 157 or 159, gives the DPP the power to single source? Mm -hmm. All right. why, why are we going to yawn that this was not full? Why do we keep on complaining on anything, mm -hmm. everything that is obvious? Right. Kenyans right. is a land of con too much complaint. Let us make things right. Even if I was the DPP myself, that's what I could have done because things have gone so high, files getting lost in the courthouse, files getting lost, lost at the DPP, mm -hmm. investigations mm -hmm. going wrong elsewhere. Let the DPP and Kinoti and the Inspector General of police do their work, and I think, in my opinion, as a British trained lawyer, mm -hmm. I am for it 155%. All right, uh, and then the DPP says this appointment is meant to inject confidence in the country. When President Uru Kenyatta took office in 2013, he made that promise to stop the rot in the country, especially on the basis that millions of monies were being lost in the country at the hands of top government officials. But many say three years down the line, he's been quite slow uh, in prosecuting these. What difference? will this appointment make but, in the prosecution of high-profile cases? First of all, there is nothing like a high-profile case or a low-profile case. Mm -hmm. Let me put it this way. When you saw the Maripa issue, the Sharon Odongo, uh, Odongo's issue, you saw the big wigs coming in because those people belong to high-profile society. When a, when a lady killed her, when, when, when Masi Chepungeno killed her son of four months old, nobody was able to go to court even to assist her. Now, does it mean that if somebody has committed crime and is being arraigned in court, 
he is being referred to as a high profile case mm -hmm. does it mean that when you go when you kill somebody or you go to the church late one sinner is bigger than the other one mm -hmm. this stereotyping is what is killing uh, it's not stereotyping professor this is the nature of, of how things work in this country it depends well, on who you know it depends on how high you are and, and, and that's how uh, you know many corruption cases in the country have not been prosecuted to the very end because of the same reason what do you want uh, mr haji to do look at what is happening somebody has been arraigned instead of resigning honorably mm -hmm. just like what happened in britain when uh, uh, Se uh, Secretary of State, one of the Secretary of State went to Parliament late. Right. He apologized and he said, I'm resigning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I'm under moral duty and authority mm -hmm. to do so to the British subject. Right. But in this country, somebody is arraigned in court and then he's still fighting to go back to sit in the office. What mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. This is a moral duty to everybody. Right. Now, if, now <laughs> do you want the DPP to go beyond that? He's crying. He's saying, Kenyans, let us do something about this. Mm -hmm. And instead of we Kenyans coming up and saying, okay, today I've been arraigned in court, let me step aside voluntarily. You need to go to parliament to pass a legislation on that. Mm -hmm. Let the Brits also see how we do our things so that they can also debate and laugh about it. It's high time, it's high time that other jurisdictions looked at how we do our things here. Things are rotten in this country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that everything is rotten, but the judiciary, the judiciary needs revamping. The DPP's office needs revamping. And this is the first time that we want to see things happening. The very, very lawyers who represent people in court, especially those high-profile cases, mm -hmm. or so-called high-profile cases, are the ones who sit in the matrix of senior counsel. Right. Do you want to appoint one of them to, be, to, to prosecute others? Where is public interest in this? Mm -hmm. Where is this personal gain and interest in this? Where is my tribe going? Where is my, my political affiliation going? Right. Let this thing go out of the window, and oh. I will stand guided. And I'm not trying to say that Kenyan lawyers are not well enough to come up to them. Mm -hmm. But what matters is the determination, self-determination by some of us to come out and stand by the truth and support the truth instead of yawning around that, oh, we are now importing justice. It's not an issue of importation of justice. It's an issue of moral principles and to do what's right and, what, and to bring out a wrong with what is right. It's right. an issue of conscience. Well, we spoke to a lawyer, Mudhomi Thiankolu earlier on. I'm sure you were listening in to that conversation. And he seems to think that this appointment will not make any difference because the problem is not the individuals, but the system that the individuals will be coming to work in. Again, finally, as we wind up this conversation, what impact will this appointment have on the prosecution of major corruption cases in the country? Anything small is good, better than nothing. When the Italian mafias were, were corrupting the whole world by selling drugs in each and every corner of the world, it's only one policeman in 1991 who came up and said, no to mafia. And he came and blew the, wind, the whistle. Mm -hmm. And he was shot dead, but things changed for the mafia. Right. If Haji can bring in one person, because you have to start from somewhere, mm -hmm. and then let the world come in and say what? It's a duty of each and every Kenyan. It's a responsibility of each and every Kenyan to come up and say, enough is enough, a wrong is wrong. Uh, what matter, it doesn't matter how we start. If, if Haji has come up and he said, this is what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. and you have seen what he has been doing so far, with a lot of hulabus coming here and saying, oh, no, 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 Haji is going this way and that way, let him do it, Professor Ajakoya will be the first to support him. Mm -hmm. And I yes, I'm indeed, indeed supporting him. Well, Harold Qureshi now as a lead counsel, or lead prosecutor rather, uh, in high-profile corruption cases, what are your expectations of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions? First of all, the British public will be having a lot of interest in this particular litigation because they are exporting their jurisprudence to us because theirs works. So we shall have two eyes here. The public and the public interest will want to see how it is going, but there will also be some kind of a bigger boy watching and it's not only the Brits that are going to watch this, the European, will also be very, European governments will also be uh, very interested in watching. So are the Americans. Mm -hmm. So is the Indian government. Let us see how transparency will work this way. Let's try it and see if we fail, bad luck. All right. Are, are you confident then in seeing complete prosecution to the very end in some of these cases we've been speaking about? Unless the police now do a shoddy job, shoddy job by hiding the files, or doing short jobs in, in investigation, uh, 
of which I know that Kinoti is very strong in what he's doing, so is the Inspector General of Police, then what happens? Mm -hmm. Because the, these interagencies have come together and they have produced, and you have seen some people being taken to court, I am very sure that it will work that way. All right, many things. That is uh, Professor George Wajakoya there early on. We spoke to Professor Muthomi Fiankolu tonight on the decision by the Director of uh, Public Prosecutions to bring on board a lawyer from the private sector to help with some of the high-profile cases in the country. Nudin Haji has appointed the Queen's Counsel Hawar Qureshi to lead the prosecution of cases involving state and public officers in the country. Is this the beginning of the end of corruption in the country? Perhaps only time will tell. That is the big story tonight. My name is Michelle Ngele Odiambo. Anything.